Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Eiji. Uh, I'm working at Google from Tokyo office. As, and uh, as Monica said, I was born in uh, Lipte. In general, uh, Asian people are said to be uh, look like younger than people, other people, but um, I'm actually younger. <laughs> but anyway, um, today I'm going to talk about uh, signing and payment without forms. So last month, I was going to purchase a TV rack. I knew what I wanted, so I just uh, searched for the web for that particular uh, product and uh, found the most reasonable deal at a, a small e-commerce website. So I decided to purchase that using my mobile phone. According to our research, 66% of mobile purchases are done through mobile web rather than native apps. That's great to hear, right? So I went to uh, continue to check out form and try to fill out form. But in the end, I gave it up. The reason is that you know, the entire experience filling out forms is so painful, right? Uh, typing uh, credit card information, address information, and a password on tiny, tiny software keyboard is such a frustrating experience, right? So <clears throat> the same research tells that uh, the conversion rates on mobile web is 66% fewer comparing to that on the desktop. Even for returning users, rem remembering and typing their password is a pain. Another study shows that 92% of users who visited your website um, leaves without uh, resetting or recovering their account when they forget their password. Web forms uh, causing lots of friction, and we need to fix that. In order to overcome this situation, uh, web platform have come up with two new APIs, which are a Payment Request API and a Credential Management API. So what I'm going to do now is to show you a demo website uh, which we introduced at Google I.O. called Polymer Shop, and uh, how we integrated uh, Payment Request API and Credential uh, Management API uh, play nice together. Okay. So, this is the uh, Polymer Shop website. <clears throat> it looks nice, right? So imagine that I'm looking for a sweater or some kind of clothes that won't be up for upcoming winter. So let's explore the website. By the way, um, this looks all good, right? And you want it, but these are not uh, actual shop. And please don't send us email asking uh, when did you get the uh, <laughs> goods delivered. Uh, we actually had that. <laughs> But anyway, um, let's continue. Yeah, this one, this hoodie looks nice. So let's purchase this. The price looks good, right? $38.85. Uh, buy now. And now you see a dialogue pops up from the bottom. And this is actually done by an API called Payment Request API. Let's have a look at from the top. So at the top, order summary shows the uh, price of the uh, goods. Hoodie, uh, 3885, that's uh, correct. So con let's continue. Then next one is a shipping address. What is surprising is that my address information, three of my address information, of course these are fake, but um, uh, showed up. <laughs> and uh, what is nice about this is that, you know that I am not signed in or signed up to this website yet, but these all information are already available. Why? Because I have entered this kind of information in the past using the same browser. So browser nicely remembers my old address information for me, so I can use that, uh, them here. So let's select one. And the next one is shipping option. So uh, standard shipping or express shipping. So I'm not in hurry. I can just select standard shipping. Notice that uh, by selecting one, the order summary has added new price, uh, standard shipping. So the total cost has been changed. And now I go to the payment. And like uh, my address information, my credit card information is already filled here. It's quite nice, right? 
And lastly, uh, contact information. So my email address is there. Looks good. OK, everything looks good, so I can just proceed to payment. Pay. Then I give my uh, CVC and confirm. And done. So imagine that I wasn't explaining all this, right? It's only a few taps without typing single letter using a software keyboard. It's amazing experience. And now we are at the account creation page. So the good thing about um, making account creation page after making purchase is that users can uh, par make purchase using a guest checkout, which is much, much lower harder for uh, users. And then users are motivated to create an account. You may uh, provide some reason for that. For example, you can provide like 10%, 10 percent discount for the next uh, purchase, or maybe you can provide like a delivery tracking feature, right? So why not? Let's sign up. So email address is, uh, as you see, already filled up. It's nice because it was provided by Payment Request API. The email address is al already filled. So all I have to do is to type my new password here and sign up and done. And now, as uh, if you look at the bottom of the page, it's asking me if I want to store my credential information. It's nice, yeah? So save. This will make my uh, next visit to this website much, much easier. So browser assist me to sign in. But here's a new thing. By using Credential Management API, the things got much, much easier by letting me sign in without a single tap. To demonstrate that feature, um, I'm going to swap device to a new one. So what, what is going to happen is that the credential information I have just stored to my uh, other device is synchronized across my uh, Google account. And it is now, it should be now, in my uh, other device. And hopefully, it will work. <laughs> and uh, yeah, let's see. Um, to be honest, this sometimes fails. <laughs> so fingers crossed. OK, ready? Look at the bottom of the page. Boom, I'm signed in. Yeah. So imagine that you, know, you have to sign in by tapping something at least, but with this, you have no action required to get signed in and just continue your shopping experience. This is really nice. Okay, can you uh, turn back the page? Uh, slide? So, um, sorry, um, this beautiful integration was possible because of a payment request API and credential management API. And uh, I'm going to introduce uh, each of uh, APIs now. So Payment Request API. So Payment Request API provides a standard compliant online payment flow. Usually making payment requires you to fill a long form and uh, submit that to the server. But with Payment Request API, you can, um, instead of filling out form, you can just a few tap to submit the same information. If there are no address or credit card information already available, users can just add them on the fly using the same native UI. The address information can be stored and synchronized across uh, devices and available from anywhere for their future shopping experience. The best part of Payment Request API is that once those information is stored to the browser, we basically have all the data required to get the uh, payment flow, uh, get through the payment flow and without creating an account. Even for the users who have never visited your website before can make purchase, and it's easy. Payment Request API also allows third-party payment methods to be part of the ecosystem. Anyone will be able to provide an app or a web app to, uh, for merchants to process payment in the future. One such effort is Android Pay uh, for Payment Request API which is currently in beta, and you can try it out. 
To learn more of, about Payment Request API, we provide integration guide and uh, demo site and so on. So you can just follow the link, g.co uh, Payment Request API. So integrating Payment Request API into uh, Polymer Shop, we created a component, Shop Payment Request. Uh, nice thing about making it a web component is that the sum of uh, predefined parameters can be set as element uh, attributes, element attributes declaratively, like uh, currency, supported methods, and request, uh, request pay or email, and so on. It's declarative. Requesting payment can be done through a function call. Because it returns a promise, you can just continue with sending the result to payment processors when the promise resolves. And now, about the Credential Management API. So Credential Management API provides a programmatic interface to the browser's uh, password manager in a secure way. So you can obtain or store user's credential information on behalf of the user. As you have seen at the uh, Polymer Shop demo, you can enable auth sign in by obtaining the credential information, then uh, send that over to the server on behalf of the user, which is authentication. Signing in using a third party identity, such as Google or login, is quite popular because it allows users to sign in just by one tap, right? And it's also uh, good for your security. But the problem is that that kind of information is not stored to the browser. So you forget which identity provider I use to sign into this website, right? But by using Credential Management API, it can even remember that information. So by uh, storing the choice of your uh, uh, federated login account, you can let invoke uh, identity provider's authentication logic to let the user sign in. Even if you choose not to use auto sign in, you can still skip the sign in form by using a uh, account chooser without typing a password. This feature is also uh, useful for those who have multiple accounts. So it's handy. Android apps have similar feature called a smart lock for password. By associating your Android app and your website, you can share the same credential information between them. So if a user stored uh, credential information to Android app by signing up, he can, uh, the, the user can come back to the, their, the same website, the associated website, to get all signed in, which is awesome. To learn more about Credential Management API, uh, we also provide an uh, integration guide and so on, so you can just follow g.co slash Credential Management API. And integrating this shop uh, Credential Management API and entire authentication uh, mechanism was we created by uh, shop account component. We put uh, various features into this. For example, uh, form UI, it actually included UI, and uh, loading UI, uh, notification UI, as well as authentication logic, uh, federated login logic, and credential ma management API, and also managing profile data. So it's very complex. And the point is that uh, a lot of different parts of the app require to access those kind of information or logic. So what we've done is to decide to split that into two parts. So one is a shop account, the same name, uh, with uh, all the UI related things. And the new one is shop account data, which uh, handles all the authentication logic related things, as well as managing uh, profile data. By adding I1 meta, behavior uh, to the shop account data. We've made it available uh, through, throughout the uh, app. Also, by returning a promise, things got much simpler by changing functions to reflect results to the, uh, to the UI, depending on the context. So recap, um, Polymer Shop, I, I started with a Polymer Shop demo, and it integrated two APIs, which is uh, Payment Request API and uh, Credential Management API. And how I, we integrated these APIs into Polymer Shop. And lastly, uh, I forgot to mention that what about the TB rack I was going to purchase. And uh, what I've done was after uh, abandoning my purchase on the checkout form, I just 
went home and used open up my laptop and continue my purchase. And uh, it's happily sitting in my living room, so I'm very happy. And uh, yeah, I'm hoping, I'm really hoping that that they will come soon where I, I could finish all the entire shopping experience using mobile web. Thank you. <laughs>